Hello and welcome to the Beyond Six Seconds podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn Keel, and on today's episode, I'm speaking with Amber Louise Ainsworth, a dissociative identity disorder, or DID, system from the UK. Since realizing they're a DID system in early 2021 at age 38, they've been working through their healing, processing and sharing all their collective trauma. They've written several books, including The Revelation, which details the first year of healing they went through after finding themselves in late 2020. Amber, welcome to the podcast. Hi, how are you? I'm good, and I'm really excited to talk with you today. I read The Revelation, and it's just a really amazing and just such an educational portrayal of all of the things that you've been through in, in a relatively short amount of time. So, you know, you discovered that you're a system of alters just like a few years ago. So uh, what was your life like before you discovered that? I thought it was quite normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mia, who you'll talk to, will tell you that I'm very boring. <laughs> and since we've been finding each other and Mia has been a big part of my, our life, living it, she's done so much. And yeah, it is a joke that she's done more in her two years of living than, than I have, have in, in the last 40. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but however, it's always been a struggle. There's always been ups, ups and downs. Uh, it's been very hard to keep a job. I've suffered chronically with depression and anxiety. I've had cyclical breakdowns for at least the last decade. Interestingly, they were bi-yearly, and we think that was related to our first trauma, which was at two. And it, it, it it's, it's been hard. I, I've always known something was wrong. I've always known something wasn't right. I've being told by doctors you've got depression and anxiety take the take the pills um i saw a psychiatrist in 2016 who um told me i've got depression and anxiety <laughs> and on the notes he did write that i'd got borderline traits but didn't tell me that so i think that was probably a kindness knowing everything what we know about how bpd is perceived and the experience of living with that label so at first when I found out that that was written, I was like, I was a bit angry that I wasn't told that. But yeah, I, I, I get why you would withhold that when it is just traits they saw. He didn't. And that's because of my fragmentation. I do have alters with BPD. I do have alters with bipolar. We think it, at least it looks like it that anyone that can spend a month and put together a 70,000 word book it, even though a lot of it had already been written, mm -hmm. the fact that they sat in bed for a month, it was it was full on mania. Wow. It's the only way to explain so much of my life. I've got, yeah, I went to uni at 22. Psychology and health studies, I studied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. In retrospect, I assume that was looking for answers that yeah. I don't recall dissociation being mentioned, but then amnesia, so who knows? <laughs> right, right. In 2010, I did, that's the only time that I've lived by myself as an adult. And in the year in that flat, I became a we, which got forgotten. I re-entered society and forgot that that happened. But I remember that I was interacting with people and saying we all the time. And whatever happened with me by myself in that flat, I we found ourselves in, and, and there's no memory of any of it. Wow. <laughs> just knowledge that it happened mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yeah, a lot of my memories feel like that memories are more like I know it happened but it's just knowledge that's all it's strange yeah wow yeah I mean and you talk a little bit about this in the revelation but how did you discover your first altar and, and like who who was that it was Isabel again as I said, mem it, this is just knowledge this happened. I've got no memory from it actually happening. And it came about after drinking drugs. I'd had a bit of whiskey and I was a bit stoned. Uh -huh. And it was October 2020. I'd spent about a thousand hours playing Animal Crossing that year, which in itself, <laughs> I think, I mean, a lot of people did similar things in 2020. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that during that time, I think we just found each other again. And one night in October, 
I, I, I just, I realized they weren't my thoughts. I start, we started communicating, Isabel and I. And the next day it's like, this time I had memory of it though. I've got history of, I know that if I drink and smoke, I'm going to black out. There's going to be no memory. Whereas this time I knew stuff had happened. I knew she was there and I had to learn how to communicate with her without <laughs> hitting, hitting a bottle of whiskey and a couple of joints. And um, we found that hypnosis, which I explored in my twenties, I, I used to count to bring Isabel to the front into the body and I'd count, she'd switch out. We'd be able to communicate. It was, it's hard to communicate in the head, which is how we became, we came to write so much. And some of the first journal entries that Isabel did on our phone ended up in the revelation showing just how it, how hard it was. So, so yeah, we, we, and I treated her as if she was an inner child because I'd heard of that healing and just assumed that she she was an inner child mm -hmm. <laughs> and then in december christmas eve i thought i'd regressed i was suddenly six years old i was i was six this was 2020 when we were locked down mm -hmm. and christmas day morning i got up very aware that i was me again i was 38 or what, yeah two years ago and but I knew Mia was, Mia was here. <laughs> wow. And it was a few weeks later that she split on her way out. She just didn't know how to present. She didn't know how to speak. She didn't know how to be. And suddenly there were two of her. And then later that month in the January, I spoke to a friend and confided what had been happening with me and with these inner children that I was healing and how bizarre this all was. I fortunately did have a therapist. Mm -hmm. She was a trainee through, oh boy. <laughs> through a, yeah, she was a trainee through a charity that does just normal therapy. You know, if they saw what, if they knew the truth about me, they would never have taken me on. Mm -hmm. Never, not in a million years. Mm -hmm. But they already did before I did. <laughs> I come along like, oh, I found someone talking to me in my head. She's talking back. I think I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> So yeah, it, a lot happened very fast. Uh, I told a friend about these inner children that I was healing. And she said, that's not inner children, that's DID. Wow. And I was like, what's DID? <laughs> so, wow, so your friend actually told you about it or thought, <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you were also studying to be a massage therapist? After losing yet another job, I realized that yeah, I decided to train in massage therapy. So that was about 2016. Did the training, very quickly found about found out about myofascial release through people I was on my course with and how this could release physically held trauma. And it all sounded very, very fascinating. The uh, one aspect of myofascial release is the body unwinding and the body moving to what as it needs to do to uh, it, while connected with the mind so you can be you can go through memories quite vividly mm -hmm. while on a massage table yeah. it, it, it's so it was in it was when I went to America and trained with John F Barnes who kind of is the father of of indirect uh, myofascial release mm -hmm. and it was there that I remembered this first trauma and realized that there might be something much deeper going on with me than... And now that I've mentioned that, I can feel my trauma holder, Baloo. She cried for 36 years. Yeah, I can feel her getting closer because I'm talking about her. Wow. This is, we will switch mid-sentence. If you start telling someone else's story, we'll switch, not realize, and then go, right. oh, wait, oh, I'm not even, <laughs> who started telling them? <laughs> But that, I guess, is is part of keeping it covert. It's keeping it hidden from myself. If I go to think about something that belongs to someone else, or it, then I amnesia never happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I was going to ask, like, all of your your alters, and and you discover more and more alters since twenty twenty, since first realizing that you're a DID system. 
were all of your altars created in response to like a sp specific experiences or specific traumas? Do you know? It is incredibly confusing and no i don't think they were we definitely have subsystems we're incredibly complex and i we don't even know how many altars we have we've there are people that we know still exist somewhere inside here mm -hmm. uh, i just got a vision of where they exist and and uh, but no it's more complex than that and it's it's hard to understand and it's hard for me to understand, but many, but during 2021, as you know, in the revelation, as altars were presenting, they were bringing their own traumas with them. Mm -hmm. So we had Isabel come out. Well, she was the first one. She, I have two head scars. They belong to her when she's in the body, they itch, they scratch. It's weird. Wow. They can hurt. I had people come out with grief. I had people come out with the first cold sores, Kara, who's now fused with Isabel, and together they are Karis, which is great because Isabel is quite horrible. She's our protector. She ha had a life of pain, fear, and frustration. So when that's the only experience in your life, you'll be quite a bitch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and one of the earliest but, experiences, too, it sounds like, yeah. Y yeah. Like, we've no idea what happened in those first years. It's all guesswork. And I just know that we've been living this for our whole life without even realizing. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. lot. Yeah. It's interesting because I think some people's perceptions of DID from like the media or whatever is that there's like complete amnesia between all altars. But from reading the revelation, it sounds like, yes, there is, there, amnesia is part of it, but your altars in some cases can communicate with each other, either sort of directly in, in your mind or through writing. So do you know, how do your altars usually share information and experiences with each other? Don't even know. This is how hard it is. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> we, now we can hear each other because we've done, got, done a huge amount of integration, becoming closer, breaking down the barriers. I, I'm assuming that before this all started, that at least the the reveal came out, happened, we couldn't. And I, there was just a huge amount of confusion with, if you, someone joked to me, I did a tweet saying, I think that my my consciousness is, it looks a bit like the, the, the underground map. <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's what it feels like sometimes. You're just frozen. It's like, I've got... Like Little's wanting to go and do that and then someone else is doing it. And it's just like, it, it's very hard. That's why we've written so much. And we find it easier to talk out loud if we actually want to hear each other and know. And it's quite hard to think at each other, which is weird. Yeah, so talking and that, writing, I guess. Talking, writing. Yeah. Paying attention to feelings. We often find. All right, sorry, it's it's blue. Yeah. Blue. yeah it... Oh damn it! Now I've dissociated myself by realizing that I switched. We we often notice, find that if it's paying attention to the feelings emotions weird body sensations and saying oh wait what is that and then asking and then some clarity might come we can ask inside the head like are you saying x y and z and there'll be a there'll be an, an a, like an affirming feeling like yes <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. correct <laughs> or it, it, it's yeah there's a lot of confusion oh wow yeah and you know you I guess me and Jessica, I should say, wrote the revelation together and you've written lots of books. How do you like how do you work together to write those books? Mia. Mia. It's all Mia. It's all it's always been Mia. Ever since she came out and it's Amber back, sorry. But within so it was the December that I met Mia, 
January found out about DID. In the December, I had told my mum and my husband that I'd found an angry 15-year-old in my head who took control when I'd been drinking, mm -hmm. which obviously was received with what, how, like, oh, okay then. My husband did actually go, well, that kind of makes sense, but without <laughs> any understanding of <laughs> why why does it make sense because you're like an effing teenager when you've when you're drunk like oh. all right okay thanks oh, and, and now i know that i literally can be like <laughs> mm -hmm. so that happened and me and it's about the we're all trying to work through stuff i've found out about did we're exploring this this is making sense okay we've got a, a an explanation for what's happening we're not as we're not crazy at least we're not <laughs> we're not crazy this is our reality yeah. and Mia was just she was journaling a lot she was writing already and she was desperate to be able to interact with more people so they created their own Facebook account and it just as soon as the first the, she'd got her handful of friends who'd met her who knew about her they started interacting and we we met some of the systems on Facebook groups. It just boomed. She just didn't stop. She just wrote and wrote and wrote. And when other people were going through experiences and having stuff happen, she would pressure them to write, write it down. We need it for the book. Mm -hmm. And they're going, what book? Who's going to read this book? You <laughs> like, fine. All right. All right. I'm writing. I'm doing it. I'm telling Facebook. Let's overshare again. <laughs> like. <laughs> So yeah, it's all Mia. She she then someone told her that a poem was good. So she's like, oh well, gonna go make another Instagram then. And that's how the name did we write DID we write. Did we write? Oh, oh, did we write? <laughs> <laughs> that that came about and which is now our pen name because no one could agree on a name because I didn't want my name used. I didn't write any of it. Mia didn't want my name used because she wrote it. She yeah. didn't, but she didn't want her name used because others wrote parts of it. It's like, so what, whose name do we use? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she went to Instagram and suddenly was writing tens of poems every day. And within six months had amassed over a thousand it it she just i've we've, she's published three books of poetry and wawu's little's book of poetry and there's still thousands of poems that might get sorted into books one day wow. she started on another one dissociated days d-a-y-s but we like our puns. <laughs> she's, she's, she does like a pun. Oh, wow. Yeah, she writes a lot of poems. And a lot of uh, the other alters write poems, at least in the Revelation. <laughs> there's um, all kinds of stories and poems and inputs from other alters as yeah. well. So it was Mia kind of asking people to write, and then she would kind of find what they wrote down and put them together? Well, the once Mia had started, like there's this cute little bit in the beginning of the, the revelation that we keep thinking like Mia's poems. Could, uh, oh, it won't focus. Probably won't focus, but, but... oh, please focus. Anyway, this is it. Just we keep thinking like Mia's poems, and Mia's poet Mia Mia evolved as a poet, and everything in. The revelation is her her starting point. You'll you'd see that it, it it's a very different style to the latest stuff. After our mum said to her, some punctuation would be nice. So she was like, "What <laughs> punctuation? What's that? Like, like literally, like there's not a single comma in or a full stop." And then, oh, yeah. and then she suddenly went, "Ah, oh, maybe I should be thinking about this a bit more." <laughs> but she set the brain up. People couldn't be conscious, couldn't be present without without making poetry out of what was going on around us. We could and we couldn't do anything without me and narrating. There's another hilarious bit in there. She thinks she's not real. She thinks she's being made up by a seven year old narrator. And it's like this, <laughs> like how are you meant to feel like your life is real and it's not actually being written in a book when it is gonna end up in a damn book that someone in your head is gonna write. It's 
I love her so much. I really do. But <laughs> I wouldn't wish this on anyone. <laughs> no. And Mia's, is she, she's seven right now, is that? She's now 13. She's wow. aged. Uh, so yeah, I've been absent for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. off doing whatever I've been doing in my own head. Mia was doing a lot of owl here. And um, yeah, she's, she's, she's thinking about growing up, which wow. is actually huge because she has a few times and she just gets very upset. And interestingly, your the the nature of your podcast she's been debating and wondering if we are autistic which she's been telling twitter about profusely mm -hmm. and the fact that she's never masked and she can't mask and look at me and and then she likes to tell everyone you know, that I, I i'm apparently a mask i'm not real mm -hmm. uh, thanks thanks really? mia but yeah there's it the this could explain a lot of stuff as well, which we've seen. We know that autism does happen quite a lot alongside plurality. Yeah. They seem to go hand in hand, whether it's that, they, well, there's different theories that people who are autistic are more prone to trauma and dissociation, Yeah, which is quite hard and sad. And you, you mentioned this in the revelation, or the alters write about it, that sometimes your alters go through fusing and then separating. Do you know what causes that or or even like what that feels like when that's happening? Yeah, I'm currently a fusion. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. Oh. It, is, it is unpleasant because I know that I'm Amber, but, and I haven't even examined this yet. And I've only been back a few days and you're basically the first person that I've had a conversation with. Oh. <laughs> uh, Mia did make me ring my mum an hour ago just to make sure that I would actually talk to someone <laughs> I'm here I will do it it's fine it's really hard for us it's been we've had countless fusions it feels like it's related to healing and integration because yeah. once you've been someone else it, it you do you share your memories experiences everything that goes with it and then when we separate or split when that because that's happened a lot as well it, it, you don't necessarily take if you imagine mushing a, a piece of two pieces of plasticine together and then mm -hmm. splitting it again they're going to be different yeah they, yeah they might have bits of the, it and it's fascinating how how self how our consciousness feels like that how we can and there's there's even been bizarre fusions that have only lasted a day and, and then we realize afterwards where it was just to pass apart a, a fragment or a, an altar who isn't quite complete we've got hundreds of them it, and yeah there's there's been a lot Mia do you want to talk about fusions all right so yeah well I guess I've done an awful lot because and it, uh, most of my fusions are in the, the revelation I've not been in any for a while but for me, for us, it, it was that. Oh, sorry, I'm a little bit dissociated, and it's okay. Oh. When I the fusions that I've been with in, in have all been with trauma holders, and it's been to help them heal in the body. Which, when you're a trauma holder who's been dormant for thirty years, and you've you suddenly come out and you're six years old or four years old, but your life is actually you're thirty nine and you've got this stupid big body mm -hmm. that doesn't fit, and and the only way that we've found for our trauma holders to heal is by being here, feeling, feeling physically, like we. You think so much that feel it. Well, feelings you think are in here, but they're not, are they? They're 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 such a physical thing, yeah. and you can't process a lot of a lot of those feelings, those emotions, and that trauma unless you're in the body and you're feeling it. So, the yeah, air we've had, I've been uh, uh, fused with loads of trauma holders just to give them a chance to uh, be in the body, but not do it by themselves. So yeah, we've no, we, most of mostly it's not a conscious choice at times. 
it, it sometimes has been though and we are able to do that which is weird when we ask for things to happen like Stefan one of Steph, our sexual altar, when she went through her epic nine day healing event, which is in the revelation, I'm sure you remember that one. It was quite, <laughs> poor, poor Steph, it was rough. Uh, and when she and Jade, who was a 15 year old version of her, they decided to fuse and they're like, all right, what, what do we do? And I came and they were able to go wherever it is that we go. And they came back 10 minutes later, one person. Like, yeah really weird it's mm -hmm. also weird it just brings up so many questions about consciousness soul like for us now this is going completely off tangent mm -hmm. but i mean the fact that i can walk out of my own face makes me pretty sure that when i die that when this body dies i'm i'm quietly confident that i i, I will not die whatever that means but anyway this is she's gone <laughs> this is what men will do Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, no, I said too much and run away. She oh. made me go to a... She wanted to go and try friggin' improv. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, she went to a, a, a an improv thing. So I, I took her. I explained my situation. Everyone was lovely. and But at least twice, it, it was doing a, a group activity, and she went, oh yeah no I can't do this and run away I'm like yeah no she's gone she's not here next mm -hmm. and I'm not engaging in this I don't want to be in there <laughs> she, I took her she wanted to go yeah <laughs> oh wow yeah Amber you mentioned that you were away for a while and I know because we're connected on Twitter and Mia's kind of been narrating what her experience has been like <laughs> this is my life yeah. while we're away. um but yeah can you describe well I, I don't know without getting into any details that you don't want to get into but kind of when you go away does that mean that you were off like fusing and separating like somewhere else in in the mind? I have spent I've spent a lot of time missing so in in the revelation and the I was missing for much of that summer 2021 and I've been missing a lot but the way our consciousness works a lot of the id systems do have access to their inner world they know what's happening somewhere else or at least parts of it it's going to vary from altar to altar who has what access who knows what but for us we have none it's all it's all guesswork and when i'm not here i i've no memory of not being here i come back and it's just the memories of what's happened in recent days are filled in and I've remembered recently some of the tweets that me has been putting out and been like, all right, we're talking about that then, are we? Mm. <laughs> Which is hard, but also I told her to have auto autonomy and do what she wants to do because look at what she does when she does it. Yeah. And I know that she can help people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. It's usually whether I'm involved in facilitating another fusion or some healing. A trauma holder, Baloo, she's been through a lot. It the healing her has been a complete roller coaster of misery, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much of which went into Mia's second book of poetry, aptly titled M "Woe Is Mia." Oh. <laughs> She was calling it woe is me. And we we're like, wait a minute, you and your puns, you've got, you can't, you can't not call it woe is me. Like, <laughs> She's good with puns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 250 pages of um, depression and suicidality. Wow. Yeah. It, it, and she split it up. It's so funny. Perpetual woe. <laughs> <laughs> wishing for it. perpetual woe is massive it's like half the book it's basically just depression wow. in, in in like a hundred poems mm -hmm. <laughs> wishing for the worst woe wow. woeful positivity and then back to woe uh, it's oh, like... yeah, like, oh my gosh <laughs> there's a lot of woe yeah. but it it we're really proud of it and and the books that eventually we will write because as you know, at the end of the revelation, Jessica set herself up for two more books of the same format, right? which never got worked on. Yeah. We say we do a lot of things. The amount of times that Mia says, I'll do it tomorrow. And she even made a tweet about this a couple of weeks ago. Like, if I say I do it tomorrow, 
that means nothing like (laughs) so it's a miracle whenever we do actually get anything done it's like I think amnesia is real, even if we don't see it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Or, exp- or think we have it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is really funny. There are people will say, and I don't think I have much amnesia, but my memory is terrible. Like, well, what is amnesia if it's? <laughs> <laughs> well, is it so like coming back, you said you kind of get filled in from the memories of the past few days, Is but that's sort of like knowledge. It's not like, oh, I remember this. It's like someone telling you that this happened like what does it feel like oh it doesn't it feels like it's just information it it it, it's sneaky to make you believe that it's something that you did uh, and the way our memories are shared we we've no idea who did what except for when a a trauma holder comes out with holding a specific trauma or there have been times when someone will will appear and be hanging around and we'll realize that we're ruminating for days on a part of the life. And it's like, oh, wait a minute, we're clearly processing a load of stuff around that relationship or that, oh, that's, it's not that we're just suddenly randomly just thinking about a relationship from 15 years ago. It's that these are the memories that have been thrown out to process and let go of. Yeah. which that as well is extraordinary that we can feel such deep dark horrible feelings and emotions and and experiences and then once once we're through it it, it it's let go of it it, it does it, it it the healing is real yeah which you know if we'd waited for the therapy that we need which we're still theoretically years from yeah. I mean someone said to us before like uh, about the waiting list on things and it's like yeah well if we waited for therapy we'll, I, I don't think I'd still be alive now because yeah. it, it it's like keeping a lid on a atomic bomb at times that's what it feels like mm-hmm. oh yeah me is just gonna boom that's the one mm-hmm. boom by pan Mia. 34 so yeah this explains like what what it feels like this is boom by pen and mia me too afraid to let my feelings show i sit here mourning my positive glow but my feelings bubble and multiply until boom i can do nothing but cry emotions explode rationality implodes scratching screaming detaching dreaming emotions rage red is all i can see Lashing out, unable to gain clarity. Triggered pain subsides and left numb, trying to forget whatever I have just done. That's what it's like. Like we were there last week, just a few days ago, for days of feeling like that. Like just the physical discomfort when you're processing those deep feelings is is so it's so immense. And at the time, it feels like the only solution is death, which is just it it. You, because when it's so intense it does and it's so hard being feeling like that when you know it'll pass but at the same time it feels like it's never going to pass and you also know that once it passes it's going to we're probably going to end up back there we've been doing this for years mm. and we hope that one day we'll feel like you know we maybe don't have DID anymore we can drop the disorder and just be plural but as it is we have DID and life is very hard especially not knowing who we're going to be from day to day that that's difficult but in a way wow yeah I think it's amazing the amount of healing you've been able to do as a system without having the specific therapy that you need yet like you've done pretty much everything that you've done the healing the discovery on your own which is really incredible well we've we've said before in it's been written that we feel like we've been gathering the tools amber's been getting what she needed to be able to get us through this like the myofascial release the knowledge of physical trauma even though we don't practice anymore and we don't have anyone we haven't anyone do myofascial release on us for a long time either we know just knowing 
being able to acknowledge it like we do a lot we do yoga a couple of times a week and what we walk every day so we're still connecting with the body and being aware of what is happening that the hypnosis a lot a, a good grounding in 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 basic psychology like just the degree that that will have helped not to remember much of it mm-hmm. and just lots of other stuff that she's definitely picked up along the way that have helped us get through it mm-hmm. that we couldn't have without the b- biggest one which is a bit of a weird one and um, we do sometimes feel like we're walking the line between mental a uh, mental illness and being spiritually aware of ourselves as 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 oh i'm back on souls i'm gonna run away again oh. <laughs> no i'm not i'm not the it the it, amber she she's got two reiki achievements she had to open herself up to spirituality she had to acknowledge that her her massage practice was more than a massage practice and that she did actually work with people energetically as well she had people telling her before she even knew what reiki was she was like oh you do reiki too two people said you do reiki too and she's like what's reiki well the second one she knew by that time but she was like oh well apparently yeah i'm working with energy but and then for us it we had to dive into that before the system was revealed and and yeah so it's interesting our spiritual journey as well as as well as the mental health thing the other thing amber says she thought before but didn't say it was that she's always felt like something's going to happen she thought that god would talk to her but figured that was pretty unlikely but anyway this is like a bit bit, bit, (laughs) that's why i called my book the revelation but put a little r because i was like well it's not exactly biblical (laughs) Mm. she didn't see this one coming i think you'd be more likely to believe that god is talking to you to be honest and this sometimes yeah wow yeah that is so interesting that amber kind of found those tools before before the revelation to help Uh, yeah yeah so interesting and the other thing the little thing is we've been picking up feathers for years well and it's i know it sounds right but it's just she had this deal in our own head that when we filled this jar of feathers life would make sense the jar is overflowing the jar the jars the jar's full there's feathers and there's feathers we're back on picking up feathers again because we realize that we actually need to help and and that little process it just reminds us of what we're doing in the journey yeah so that's funny just picking up feathers it means so much to us, but it's such a random little thing. Wow. But I wonder if that's maybe related to possible autism and collecting things. That... <laughs> Could be, yeah. And and you know, you've you've talked about you know the things that have helped you heal and process all of your feelings, like the the massage therapy. I guess the therapy that you get to see with your. Or do you still go to your? therapist and talk to them no what happened was it's me still Mia. so the therapist that amber first started seeing just after she found isabel she was a trainee we saw her for eight months Uh and then they said no more when they realized that this was actually real and she was only allowed to talk to amber she wouldn't talk to no one else it was it was hard yeah so one week it's like oh next week this clinic manager sitting in with us it will not good news. And so, yeah, we were told that we wouldn't be seeing her again. And he was like, offered us weekly catch-up calls while we wait for therapy. And then, but he said the first one we could have in person. And during that first one, he went, actually, I'll see, I'll take you on myself. Thank goodness. So the clinic manager had done a little bit of training and some Carolyn spring training. So he knew, knew a bit. So he took us on and then he left. But he saw us voluntarily on Monday nights for over a year. Wow. Which, yeah, that got us through. We stopped seeing him in January. Understandably, he was like, I can't do this forever. And But we're so grateful to him, man, and uh, our mental health nurse that we see once a month. Oh, without him as well, we were so lucky to get in with him. And he, it, that was because we got fobbed off. Amber asked to be referred to the specialist psychotherapy service and the doctor went, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. But you can see our mental health nurse if you want. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, fine, thanks. Any help is better than no help. Right. 
but best thing that ever happened. Yeah. We walked in, she told him our experience and he believed us. And it was wow. just like, we were ready to be told that we weren't, we were making it up, which we've been told by psychiatrists. We've got a report that says we've got false memory syndrome. We haven't, well, we still got that report, but we've since been diagnosed with DID by a different psychiatrist. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard. Like get, getting help when people don't, yes. one, don't know about it. Two, do, literally don't believe in it. Some of the people that are theoretically trying to help us. Oh, I could rant for a while. Wow. I'll stop talking now. <laughs> yeah, that makes it that makes it so challenging. Oh, absolutely. And, and everyone likes to have an opinion, doesn't it? Sorry, but if you're not plural, you shouldn't you shouldn't be speculating. Like there's enough of us out here sharing our experiences on YouTube and everywhere, writing books, doing everything to show people our truth. And yet people like like to sit and speculate and fake claim and tell us it's not real. Like, well, you go and live this and tell me it's not real. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. I get a bit I get a bit angry about those horrible people. There's a lot of them out there. But anyway. Yeah. There's just yeah, there's so much misconception and stereotypes and ignorance around DID and a lot of other, you know, neurodivergences and mental health conditions and yeah. There's a fa a, there's a Facebook yeah. group that is just for mocking people with DID. Wow. That's got four, 40,000 people in it. Mm -hmm. I won't say its name because I don't want to give them some more traffic, but no. like that it, it pretty much every day that that knowledge upsets me and I wish I could just not know. Yeah. That's why I think it's so important for you to share your experiences there are always going to be doubters and people who just like can't have their minds opened but for people to know what it's really like you know it, it helps people it helps people understand themselves and maybe understand some other people they have in their lives who you know maybe having did or similar conditions that's the other thing one to three percent it's as common as red hair and we we do wonder if it's probably higher than that because we got to 37 with no idea how many yeah. people lived their whole lives. If you don't have the information and the opportunity to recognize it, you're not going to, are you? You're going to just keep living, being confused, not understanding why you're behaving like you're behaving right. and, and everything else. Yeah. And how many people have other diagnoses? Like you said, you went through life being told that you had anxiety and depression and that was it. Well, some people just, you know, never get the it revelation. It can look like schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. the, the assumption is quite often if you're hearing voices that the DID would not be the first thing that people go to mm -hmm. and if you're treating DID as if it's schizophrenia or another psych or, or psychosis or something there is no healing happening because you're just burying it mm -hmm. if you're taking a drug that is preventing communication with your alters like yeah well done you've dealt with one aspect of it right. but you're just burying it for later mm -hmm. and it's going to bite you in the butt harder when it comes back, when we come back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing on my podcast your, your experiences and for all the wonderful books you write about your experiences to help everybody. Like, how can people either, like, find your books or connect with you online on social media if they want to learn? Oh, more? thanks. Oh, well, it's been amazing. Thank you for inviting us. Honestly, we're absolutely made up. We love it. We're really happy. So we've got a website, didwewrite.co.uk, all one word. And then we're on most social medias as Did We Write as well. I'm pretty active on Twitter at the moment. I do mostly my Instagram is just of my poetry and stuff. We also like, we want to help others share their stories. Like we said, we've got this blog that we are sharing stories from. And so, yeah, if anyone does want to share anything, and we like we we like the idea of sharing art and stuff as well that other systems have created. So yeah, yeah, awesome. Thanks. Okay, yeah, thanks, uh, Carolyn. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I I'm really grateful for you to come on my show. I'm so glad that you were excited to come on and that you said yes. And I'm glad that we connected on on Twitter too. It's been great.